riding the prototypes at Snowshoe gives us an insight into what to expect for the upcoming year. Once that year has arrived and we get out into real world riding conditions, we get the fleet out, take out some riders and get their insight into what to expect from those models on the snow for the production year. You know, I gotta say, uh, between snowshoot and the real sleds, they're you know they're they're pretty close to what the prototypes were. Uh, not a whole lot of surprises. Um, each one has their uh, definitely has their their strengths and weaknesses. Um, I can't say I'm disappointed uh, with any of them. The uh, we had the uh, the new uh, Yamaha, and you know some people didn't like it. Uh, some people, you know, it, 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 I don't think it was a fan favorite. Um, it definitely is a heavier sled, but once you spend some uh, some miles on it, uh, adapt to it. Um, you know, you can, if you're a Yamaha lover, it definitely is uh, a huge improvement over uh, what they've had in the past uh, for a tight, twisty trail type sled. The Nitro motor is, is fantastic. Um, they still need a few tweaks. There's no question. There's uh, a few little issues with it, but uh, for first effort uh, with Arctic Cat and Yamaha. I think they uh, they really showed they did their homework. You know, I've always been I've I've always been kind of known as a Yamaha guy. Um, I've I've ridden them, I raced them, um, so I kind of grew up with all their models. And I, I adapt really quickly to Yamahas for some reason. Um, for, uh, the SR Viper we got uh, um, big improvement over over the Nitro. Um, it, it it works phenomenal. It works better. Um, there's a short learning curve, but uh, once you learn it, it, it handles really well once, uh, once you know what, what to expect. It's uh, geared more for an on-trail crossover. It's got the longer 137 track. It uh, absorbs all the bumps. Uh, it's got the Fox floats in, fr in front, but uh, the only thing I find that it should have had something maybe was the, an adjustable rear shock. Cause it's, uh, it doesn't suit all riders. It's, more, it's a little stiff for some riders and we'd like to uh, have more adjustability built in. Uh, the Articat uh, XF8000, it's a very strong motor. The suspension is just so smooth to ride in uh, rough trails. It, uh, it's not a, a jumping sled or anything like that. You don't want to, it's not an aggressive trail riding sled, but it's definitely a smooth riding sled on 90% on, uh, of the trails that we've been on today. The Skidoo continues to uh, to surprise me at uh, the Renegade. It just it just rides phenomenal. I mean, it, it, it you just can't beat that sled. It steers so easy. The the, the, the power plants are great, um, nice and smooth. Uh, they, they just continue to uh, to evolve and, and get even better if that's even possible. This was a difficult weekend. Normally I'm really kind of opinionated and I decide one sled's good and I really like it. There are four sleds here that I could, I would happily buy. The, uh, the Rush is great motor, 800 Rush, great motor, lots of, uh, lots of controllability, like you can, uh, you know, stiffen up the suspension with a turn of a knob, that thing's, you know, fantastic. Uh, then I hopped on the, uh, the Skidoo with the R-Motion. That's a really nice suspension. That thing gets great mileage. It's a peppy engine. Uh, but then, you know, speaking of engines, you hop on the Articat, uh, the El Tiger with that 600, that thing screams. It's, that's my favorite motor. Um, uh, but then the 800 motor and the Cat's also a really good motor. Uh, you know what? Any four of those sleds I could have, you know, uh, I thought all the sleds seemed pretty comparable now. I've ridden before and uh, each machine seems to have its own little uh, unique uh, thing, but uh, now they all seem uh, very much the same. The engines run about the same, uh, same noise level and uh, same rideability. They're all great.